Hello, everybody. My name's James. Welcome to the Planet FPL Fan View, where we get one of our correspondents on to talk in a little bit more detail about their club. And it's been a while for our returning Leicester City correspondent, Aaron Lagor, who has just reminded me off camera that I said he would be perfect for BBC One's The Traitors, presumably because of his devilish, handsome looks. Aaron, Leicester City are the champions of the championship. Welcome back to the Premier League and welcome back to Planet FPL. How are you, Aaron? I'm very well, thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks for having us back and um, looking forward to getting stuck into this one. Good stuff. How are you feeling? I mean, it probably goes without saying, but just describe it for us if you can. Um, hard to put down to one emotion, I think. There's a lot going on, but definitely, um, you know, a lot of joy. Um, a little bit of relief, well, quite a lot of relief, I suppose. And um, yeah, just just very happy we can we got over the line and um, feels like it's been a you know in many ways it's been a good season but it's been towards the end it was a bit nervy wasn't it so um yeah a lot of relief there and I think a lot of Leicester fans feel that too I've only properly sat down and watched you twice this season both times against Southampton you won 4-1 and 5-0 so I don't really know what the fuss has been over and why this became a, a much bigger struggle than it should have been because at one stage, I think we're going back to sort of mid-February here, you were 17 points clear of third place. You should have been promoted weeks ago, shouldn't you? Well, that's what people kept telling us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we obviously, I don't quite know what happened. Um, it, it did, I guess, the the point of the season where we were that far ahead, whether the the, the squad will kind of say that this is the case, but maybe there was a little bit of complacency there. Um, we obviously, we, we hadn't had a bad run of, of results uh, up until about February time, um, where we hadn't really lost games back to back. Then we did, and then we went on a bit of a bad run, struggling for form. I mean, we're always going to get that in, you know, in a long season, especially in the championship where the games keep coming thick and fast, but um, it, it, you know, it did feel like when we had our wobble, no one else around us did. And they well, just Leeds were going on an incredible run at the same time, weren't they? Yeah, Leeds were, Southampton were, um, you know, Ipswich were. They were all kind of, you know, coming up behind us. And uh, yeah, we we finally got over the line. But um, yeah, it, it, I think we've actually probably learned more about Maresca and the squad in those downtimes than we have throughout the the good part of the season. Because when everything's going well, it's, you know, nothing needs to change. And, you know, you don't need to find things, um, you know, deep things in, in yourself to, to get yourself through games. And the fact that we've gone through that rough patch and come out the other side is will probably stand us in good stead, hopefully, next season. Now that it's done and you can have the proper party back at the King Power on Saturday, which will be 10 years since you last got promoted as championship champions. So we presume a Premier League title is only sort of circa 24 months away, Aaron. Because uh, if anyone can do the remarkable, it's it's yourselves. But this time, d does it feel, have you had time to reflect and almost and I enjoy it in the same way? Because I think everybody on the outside expected it, and particularly because you were so far ahead. There's been assumption for a long time that you would come back up. Or has it been more enjoy enjoyable in a way because it got a little bit squeaky that there's a, a relief? Did it feel like for both an on-field and a financial perspective that you, you had to come back, basically? Yeah, I mean, we just spoke off camera about the the financial side of things and how important it ended up being that we've we've been able to get back up. That's for sure. You know, if if we'd have slipped out of the promotion places and then you know had a sticky time in the playoffs and then not gone up, that puts massive pressure on on the club and the finances, and and we could have been in a real mess. You know, we we could potentially still be in a mess going up anyway um, with looming points production points deductions on the horizon potentially so um yeah it, it it i think the overriding feeling i have is is more relief than anything um especially with all this financial stuff coming out in the last you know two three months or so um it just felt like we just had to get there you know by hook or by crook we had to do it and the fact that we have is just it's just been yeah it, it's been great but um we we know that there's some Difficult times ahead, um, potentially at the start of next season. And um, 
you know, we're going to be probably a bit limited in who we can sign and who we can bring in and, and things like that. But um, the fact that we're there is the important thing and, and we can deal with it from here on in, really. Um, to give kind of a, just a, a brief overall overview for, for other people, uh, essentially a little bit like what happened to Everton, where they'd very much budgeted to be a team that was going to be pushing for Europe. That's what you'd done. And I think quite rightly so, because you'd been flirting with the Champions League a couple of times, right? FA Cup winners as well under Brendan Rodgers. You were budgeted to be a team that was going to finish sort of circa eight or so. Then you fall down the trapdoor and it becomes alarming so quickly. Um, you sold a lot of players, um, some big name players like James Madison, for example. But it was also a surprise that you spent money on some players, you know, two players who played for England in Connor Cody and Harry Winks. What's being said in Leicester about the potential for the points deduction at the moment? Because there have been rumours that as much as 10 points, possibly. Yeah, I think there's a, it's, a, it's all very much up in the air at the moment because the, there doesn't seem to be a precedent set to what what the deductions are. Obviously, we briefly spoke about off, off camera about you know Everton and, and Forrest with their deductions and the fact that they've had an amount of deductions and then they've been reduced. And so it feels as if they don't really know what the standard is for this particular thing anyway. Um, but it's, it's difficult to say. I mean, we, we're under no illusions that we could be going to have some kind of, you know, points deduction. Um, but you can only speculate. To is that accepted or are you angry about that? Well, I mean, essentially we, we've broken the rules. Um, you know, whether you agree with them or not, that they're there. And um, like with any any side that breaks them, then we, we have to be punished accordingly, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I mean, it is, there's, you can you can look at it many ways and why these, these rules have been put in place and whether it's to keep the smaller clubs in their box and all this type of stuff. Um, you know, that's all out there in the media and stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's it feels, it, it's a bit, I mean, it was very damning with some of the stuff that came out and how how far we've gone and how how far we've breached some of these um, you know limits of of spending and stuff. But it, it's almost it almost feels like we're being punished now for things that happened you know two, three, four seasons ago, uh, where we we did try to you know push on and, and get into the top four and and missed it by a whisker. And if we hadn't have done none of this, really would have been a problem. Um, but it's it's just the price that you pay for trying to get to the next level yeah i yeah. i get where they uh, you know the pretenders is a word i've used and i've labeled leicester in that group before with sort of clubs like west ham for example it's like if you push too hard and you miss i mean evan is the perfect case right of what can happen you but you obviously suffered the ultimate punishment in suffering relegation yeah and most of us watched the end of that season with the likes of madison and, and vardy etc they'll get out of it they'll get out of it mm. you never bought a goalkeeper all yeah. season, <laughs> which, which I mean, we'll come on to the fact that you've improved that area of the pitch. But me. that did show, I mean, I, I think back to, you know, going back nearly 24 months ago now, and Brendan Rogers saying in the summer, like, look, we, we can't spend. And I've people are like, well, why? And, it, you know, fast forward a couple of years and it's become clear why now. Um, but it, as I said, it didn't stop you buying the likes of Winks and Cody last summer. So, I mean, are we expecting more sales here or is it a case of just going to kind of flatline with your business? Well, what's the expectation? It's hard to know which way they're going to go with it, actually. Um, I think from from a fan's point of view, I think we look at it and think, well, if we're going to go in there with a big points deduction, do we then just, you know, ride that deduction and then try and keep as many players as we can, do our best to, to remain in the league, then the problems become less of an issue or do we fast sail and try and get back on you know the the right side of these um these rules and and do it that way but then you've got the potential of the fact that we, we could get relegated and we're, we're back again where we started and then it's harder to get back because we've lost a big bulk of the squad it's 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 a difficult way that you know that how they're going to play it um i guess we'll we'll see in the summer but um you know, we've still got players there that are on big contracts and stuff. You know, some are coming to the end, um, which will help uh, get some of the you know the wages off the off the off the bill. So, I guess it, it's a, a watch and watch and see at the moment. But um, I guess we'll we'll find out. 
one of the regular things I've heard over the last few months in describing you is they are a mid-table Premier League club in waiting. The suggestion that points deduction aside, you know, if that's not there, you'd be very, very comfortable next year. Um, that said, I, I think there were a lot of people saying similar things about Burnley this time last year, so there's caution. But mm. your team or your squad currently is full of players that have got experience of playing in the Premier League, whereas Burnley invested in a lot of youth. And I think the in infrastructure of the football club in terms of what it's experienced to be in a top-half team for a number of years in the Premier League, also psychologically, I think, has an impact. I, I was reading earlier today that, that Enzo Mariska, the, the manager, had said in the summer, he said, look, we're, we're the big guns in here, basically. Everyone's going to come shooting for us. And and don't forget that. And remember it when you have the dips, mm. which you very much did. Do you, if, if you didn't have a points deduction at all would you be looking now thinking i want leicester to get back to mid-table straight away or if i could offer you 17th now would you snatch my hand off um it's a very difficult question to ask i think a lot of it depends on kind of who we keep in the summer and stuff but i think if you if you said that we were going to keep the bulk of the squad that we've got right now um with a 10 point deduction um you know, and you get offered me 17th, then I would take it, essentially, because then, you know, we can then build again with the, with the revenue that we've got. And then, you know, we, we just, again, next year is, is all about survival for us, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think Enzo's even come out and said that in the media. You know, it's it, it will all be about survival next year. Um, you know, we're, we're under no illusions that that's going to be the, the aim and, and anything else beyond that is a bonus I think we need to appreciate where we are not only on the pitch but financially as well so yeah I think fans fans are you know realistic about where we where we could finish next year I think during this dodgy run of results that you had which kind of culminated at the feel like with the, the almost the worst moment was losing at Plymouth it feels like and I, I caught the end of that game that night yeah. and I mentioned that one because there was a video going around on social media not long after the game from the Leicester away end of someone calling for the manager to be sacked. Mm -hmm. Now that's quite something for the manager to be sacked when he's top of the league. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Aaron, your thoughts on Enzo Maresca in his first job, who's won the title in his first season. Sh should he be sacked? Is, is he not good enough, Aaron? <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's baffling really. I think um, when you take the season as a whole, it's been a massive success. You know, the, the, there's been games in there where we we have struggled. And I mean, you, you pick out that Plymouth game. It it was dreadful. It was dreadful from start. You had so to many finish. chances, though. I mean, Dakar oh, in front we, of the yeah. that night couldn't hit a barn door, could he? Exactly. And if we take those chances, then it's, you know, we get the result and you forget about the performance and you just move on. But I think it did, the fact that the, it was very flat, the performance. Um, and we were struggling for form at that point anyway. And it just, that did actually feel like one of the lowest parts of the season, funnily enough. And, and we were it's like, a couple of weeks said, ago. yeah, and we were still top of the league, you know, and I think you know, stepping back from that, I mean, I went, I watched the game and, and kind of just felt very low after that and, and felt as if we, we might've blown it actually, because we were so on the floor after that result, it, it felt as if, the players really had to do something to, to lift themselves because it, it was only going in one direction at that point. Um, and I, I, I've, I've found out since that, well, it's been speculated about that the players kind of had a you know, players only meeting um, and, you know, things must have been said and, and they must have just got their heads together and thought, look, you know, we're in a good position. You know, we've had a good season. Let's not ruin this by, you know, just, throwing it away now um and you know i think vardy was probably a bit of a catalyst for that meeting you know probably with s some of the senior heads and they they've obviously done it and pulled it around but um yeah i mean there's been there's been the odd game like that this season where it's been like you know enzo has his philosophy he sticks to it and you know fair credit to him for that but sometimes when things aren't working you know you can see it on on the sideline you think Something has to change here, but he he just he doesn't change it. Um, by hook or by crook, sometimes it's it, you know we get over the line, and sometimes we don't. And then it's you know it, you need he's up for criticism, but on the whole, 
his season, you know, he's he's met the brief, he's got us promoted. You know, we've we've played a, some great football along the way. You know, there has been some difficult games, but you're not going to get that throughout the whole season where you're not going to have games where you've struggled. And on the whole, it's he's been a massive success. And, you know, fair credit to him for not only coming in and picking up a squad that was on the floor, um, but also implementing a philosophy that hopefully now sticks and the players have all bought in, into that. And, you know, who knows where it can take us next season. But um, it's it's going to be... You know, we're there where we need to be and hopefully we can build on this now. The, the team meeting idea is quite interesting. I I, I caught again the, the end of the Preston game and I stayed with him and I watched the interview with Vardy on the, on the pitch afterwards. Um, It's interesting that because obviously if the results had gone bad and there's this team meeting going on that doesn't include the manager, you'd think like there's a friction. Now, obviously it's worked in your favour and you've won games and there's a, there's a collective... It, I thought Vardy handled it really well when he was questioned about it because he was, he was kind of more putting the blame on the, the players themselves. Like, look, we needed to get ourselves out of it. And the manager was aware that the meeting was happening. He gave it his blessing. It was like, look, we had to pull each other. Yeah. Um, and obviously, look, Vardy's been right at the, the top of the game. His, his Premier League golden boot and title winner tells you that he's he's obviously got massive authority with the, within the football club and is entitled to do that. Yeah. It's good to hear that it's not a break from the manager because that would be quite concerning. No. Talk to me about this philosophy then. What is it? For people who haven't seen you, what are you now? You're uh, you're, you're very different from the uh, smash it out to Vardy over the top. It's not quite <laughs> such a thing anymore. It couldn't be more different. Um, you know, poles apart really. And it, it's, it, you know, you could see even in the early friendlies that we'd had, we we didn't end up having much of a pre-season because, I mean, one of the games we were supposed to be playing you, I think. Over That's in right, it was called off. Waterlogged pitch. Yeah. Um, and so I think we played Liverpool. Um, and I think there was maybe one or two other friendlies, but one was behind closed doors. So the, the pre-season was a bit of a bit of a joke, really. But even in that, that Liverpool game, um, you could see there were signs that the, the players had, you know, really taken on board what he was doing. It's very much possession based. Um, it's about um, just keeping the ball at the back, trying to work angles. Um, very much in the kind of Man City mode, um, but obviously, you know, we don't have the players that they have, and trying to implement this style with the likes of players that we have got at the back. You know, the likes of Vestergaard and stuff. Um, it's been a bit of a transition, but. You know, fair credit to a lot of the players. They've really, really bought into the philosophy, and you know they've they've really stuck at it. And you know, on the whole, it, we've played some great stuff. It, we've been really good to watch at times. Um, I think there's, there's parts of the season where maybe we, we felt a little bit predictable, um, and you know, some teams did work us out and went a bit more man to man with us and stuff, and shut us down. And we were finding these low blocks difficult to break down. Um, but it's like with anything, if you if you've got the ball for that long and you can work angles and tire the team out, that's why we were getting, you know, some of these these goals in the second half and stuff and getting over the line. Um, but yeah, it's very it is very different to you know the title winning season. Um, but I mean that was very swashbuckling, wasn't it? The way that we played yes. that. But yes. uh, <laughs> I mean very entertaining. Uh... But um, you know, thirty percent possession on average in, in a lot of those the games of that season. You know, you won't get that with us now. It's it's you know mainly 70 percent possession. Yeah, I mean, you, you've averaged across the championship this year just above sixty percent per game, which I think is probably expected actually with with the style and your opponents you're up against. Yeah. The team that's had more than you on average, you can probably guess, is the team you absolutely wiped the floor with last week and could yet obviously end up coming up with yourselves via the playoffs. But as I said, I sat through that game last week, and you're just watching your game. You're way too good for this level. Are way too good, mate. It's funny that you watch those two games because they they were the two games of the season where we we did blow Southampton away, really. And and it's not the first like time round. A lot of it was Southampton self inflicted, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the, this the the game last week wasn't. It was more about you were just too good. Yeah, and they, I mean they struggled, especially in the first half. They didn't get any rhythm going. I mean we dominated the ball like we expected to, but I mean even when they had it, they didn't particularly do much with it. They just looked very toothless. I, I don't know whether they've they kind of ran out a bit of steam because they they'd obviously gone on a great run, and I, you know I wasn't expecting a five nil game at all. I thought it'd be very close, um, but 
we we were very comfortable. And as soon as we got the second goal, it was it was how many Black we were going to get really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you scored some cracking goals. I, I, I'll tell you my assessment of what I watched a, a little bit, Aaron. I'm going to do a piece for Advanced and Intermediate Plus tier patrons looking at that game specifically last week. And you can tell me if any of this is wrong. So first thing that sticks out like a sore thumb is Ricardo Pereira from right back moving into midfield. I understand that's common, but can sometimes happen from left back. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's very much a back four. Um, centre backs seem like they're miles apart in terms of distances. Uh, with Vestergaard kind of gets left on his own, and as long as you keep the ball, that's fine. But if you lose <laughs> it, it, might be a bit of a problem. But it also it allows Pereira to come inside, and he can be quite punchy with his passes into midfield through lines. Harry Winks kind of stays as a sitting six, and you have Ndidi who. Back at his peak years ago, was this you know used to a swashbuckling, one of the best defensive midfielders around. I once said I thought he was good enough to play at Barcelona. He'd had an alarming dra- drop off, mm. but looks a little bit re-energized where he can push forward and break from a six position into an eight. Mm. And Dewsbury Hall plays the eight position and gets right up top with the forward. And you've got two wide players who want to hold the touchline and run at the opposition. Am um, I kind of on track so far? Absolutely. Yeah. The other thing that was really, really obvious, obviously, um, your boy Fatu, is it Fatu who scored the hat-trick last week? Yeah. So he's on loan. You said to me off camera, that's going to become a permanent. The thing that really stood out, obviously, he got a hat-trick in the game. But what massively stood out was the role that he did off the ball, which was really interesting because he wasn't just a wide player who was there finishing the chance at the end. Because Southampton tried to do the same thing that you do but did it from left back with Carl Walker Peters. And Fatsabu followed him everywhere. Yeah. For as a right winger, he went and man marked him defensively the whole game and then punished offensively when you had it as well. And I, it spoke volumes that if you could have the discipline in a wide player like that, and he did the job so well throughout the game, but that spoke volume of of the players and their commitment to follow what was being asked of them. Yeah. I presume there's not too many teams in the championship who've got inverted fullbacks and therefore Southampton is a very different challenge to most others. Would mm-hmm. that be a fair guess? Mm-hmm. Yep. So yep. Maresca's obviously read the room and he's set up a tactical output for that game that's worked well. You also said low blocks has been a bit of a problem on occasions mm-hmm. this year and some frustration from the fan base in terms of perhaps changing away from the philosophy, maybe going too up front at certain points. I know some Leicester fans have been asking for. You ain't going to face too much of that in the Premier League, I don't think, mate. No, this is the So thing. you could really do well. Yeah, it could play into our, fa- our favour. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about some of these personnels. Um I noticed Danny Ward and Daniel Weaverson are still with the squad. Am I am I correct about this? <laughs> Daniel Leverson's not. He's he's, oh, he's gone. On, yeah, he's been out on loan. Um, but um, Danny Ward's still around. <laughs> uh, I, I take it there'll be no four point zero goalkeeper dream. Not that it was a dream; it was a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> next year, uh, I, or is there any reason to have concern that Mads Hermanson wouldn't be good enough in the no, championship? Not he's got, at he's, all. Not you're at you're all. you're happy with him, yeah? He's got everything. Yeah, he's been such a such an upgrade. Honestly, I can't tell you. He's been, I mean, he's made player of the you know um, team of the season, and rightly so. I mean, he's he's had a couple of moments throughout the season, but you're going to get that as a young goalkeeper. But yeah, he's he's been absolutely brilliant for us this year. Um, I think we'll do well to hang on to him for for very long. Um, I think. He can be as good as he needs to be. He's he's, he's got everything a modern keeper has the needs in in the modern game. Um, yeah, I think he's um, he's great. I think it, I wouldn't be surprised if he was top off Premier League in a couple of seasons for for, for a team because I think he's he's great. He's got everything. Well, that might be your team, mate. In fairness, I well, presume. Let's hope so. <laughs> I presume FPL wise, it'll be four point five. When it's no reason, and it, he should come under consideration, shouldn't he? This is the first bit of FPL content for next season. Yeah, you Shoot, know, Aaron. <laughs> if, he, if he comes in at four point five, I'll stick him in, no doubt. He's he's a great shot stopper. Um, he does so much um, with his in possession as well, so it would be good for bonus points and stuff like that. So, yeah, he'd be a bit of a no brainer at four point five. 
But it's not going to be more than that, is it? it, it it's Wouldn't just depend. So. It's dependent on the fixtures, and I guess what other goalkeepers come in at the same price, right? Yeah, Ultimately, yeah. yeah. I think he's got the second best save percentage in the championship this year, um, which frankly was definitely going to be an improvement on what you saw from the other two last season in the Premier League. Huh. And again, going back to your structure of the centre backs being quite far apart in terms of what I saw in that Southampton game, like he ends up on the ball a lot. He almost joins in like an additional centre back. You're yeah, quite does. brave from that perspective. So yeah, I think what you said there about modern goalkeeper, very much on the money. There will be some people looking at Vout Fass and Yannick Vestergaard, who Vestergaard was completely ostracized out of it by Brendan Rogers, wasn't he? Mm. Um, and be a bit alarmed about that. Would there be reason for for alarm if that's your centre back pairing on day one next season? I think so. I mean, that you can't take anything away from from either of them, really. But especially Vestergaard, I think he's he's been brilliant for us this season. He really has. Um, I know we joked on the the pod I did with you last um, September with 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 Matt. Um, obviously, not his biggest fan, but uh, he's he's been great. You know, he's he stepped into that role, and um, yeah, I mean, the, there is there is sort of murmurs that maybe he he's he's not quite good enough for the Premier League now. Um, as good as he has been for us this season, I think we we should look to maybe strengthen in that position if we can next season. To be honest, I think I think Fass is good enough. I think the thing is with Fass, he's he he's quite aggressive uh, as a centre back. He wants to go and win the ball. It, it, you know, sometimes he can get caught out of position and stuff. Um, so you you need someone along alongside him that's got you know a little bit calmer, a little bit sort of positionally aware. So. You know, I mean, Co- Cody obviously was signed at the start of the season to to kind of be that you know, sent, you know, middle of the the back four type of thing as we you know transition out of possession and, and in possession. But he got injured at the start of the season, was out for a few weeks. Vestergaard came in, took his chances, and, and never you know, Cody never really got back in. So fair credit to him for that. Um, but yeah, I think I think maybe Vestergaard might even be one of those who actually goes in the summer. To be honest, what do you think? Yeah, his contract's up and um, he's on big money anyway. Um, I can't see, unless he's he's in for a, a bit of a wage cut, um, I think he could be, he could go. Well, I, I presume a lot of these players who've had pay cuts will get pay rises as, as part of their contracts, I would I would imagine, Aaron. Uh, there's probably a lot of players there who weren't expecting to be hit with wage deductions. Uh, I presume it would be written in if you then come back up, you you go back up in salary or, or or at least will have earned hefty bonuses this year. That's a shame that on Vestergaard because I'd already had eyes on him for Sky Fantasy oh, really? next year because obviously the way he sits in the middle of that back three yeah. and obviously it transitions to that in possession, thing, yeah. he's going to see loads of the ball. Well, if we sign um, someone, then that's definitely a position you should, you should look at for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I quite agree with that. Quite interestingly though, um, obviously, as I said, the centre-back split, but it didn't stop... James Justin was basically playing left back and we've seen him play both left and right back in the Premier League. It didn't stop him, even though he was essentially a left-sided centre-back in possession, it didn't stop him getting forward on that side and becoming like a full-back because you'd have the two in central midfield protected. So it, it, it would still maybe be an option for people. How's he been this season? Because obviously we've seen him in the England squad. Is he over injury problems now? Sorry, is it just in you say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's... um. He's been a little bit in and out this season. He's he's played his part. Um, he's played quite a lot of games, but um, we've we've had Callum Doyle play at left back for most of the season. I mean, he's had his injuries problems as well, and that's when Justin has kind of came in and filled in for him. But um, he's he's definitely fully fit again now, Justin. Um, you know, he got he got injured at just the wrong time for his career, really, didn't he? With 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 being on the the cusp of the England squad and stuff. So, um, you know, he's definitely got areas of his game he still needs to improve but um just having him fit and you know uh, back to full fitness uh, again has been great so hopefully he can kick on again next season if he gets a, a decent role in the team. does he ever play the role that i saw Pereira play does he ever move into midfield himself or or not i know like hamza chowdhury's done that role for you as well yeah. and actually did at the end of the game against southampton yeah are they the only two who does it or can justin do it as well I've not really noticed um, Justin doing it too often. Um, it's mainly been, yeah, whether they've used Chowdhury in, in that position um, or, you know, if, if 
one of the left backs is injured, then Pereira's gone to left back and chowdhury has gone to right back and they sort of take it in turns. So, um, but I mean, he's he's got the ability to do it as well, Justin. He's not a bad footballer, you know, on the ball. But I think his his strength is kind of getting down the wing and giving us a bit of width. Um, he's got a lot of energy and, you know, he's quite pacey down there. So that's more of his strengths rather than kind of sitting in midfield, spraying it about, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see whether he, he can take up that role a bit next year. Forwards will be familiar to people. Jamie Vardy's still going. Ian Acho stayed. Patson Dacca stayed. I think he bought Tom Cannon on the assumption that at least one of Ian Acho or Dacca was going to go, and then they didn't. Vardy, 17 starts, 18 goals this season. He's still got it then. Or is he that now? Is he bit part player now? Well, he's definitely still got it. Um, he's he's not played as many games. I mean, he's came off the bench quite a lot this season, um, but he has started a number of games. I think his um, you know, his 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 goal his goal ratio, I think it's um a goal every 97 minutes. Um, he's only played, I think it's about 1,600 minutes this season um, for him, so, which isn't a lot. Um, so if, you know, if he'd have got a few more games under his belt, then who knows? I mean, he, he, he could have been such a goal, top goal scorer. But yeah, he's, he's, he's certainly still got it. Evervescent as always. Um, but for those who want to know, Aaron's very close on the stats. 0.9 XG per 90 minutes this season for Jamie Vardy as per FB refs tables yeah so yeah just nearly a goal a game obviously look we're stepping up in quality level yeah, here but that, he, he's he's played more recently as well though isn't he Aaron and there's every suggestion he'll obviously it he'll, he'll definitely play for you next year will he it's looking likely I mean there was parts of the season where I thought I'm, I'm not sure whether whether he'll stick around for next season um but he's he's loving it I mean in the last few games he's obviously come in and played his part massively uh, we all we almost need him around the club, don't we? He's such a big influence, um, such a great pro, and um, you know you just need his experience in there. I think it's one of the reasons, not not only for his goal scoring and ability, which is obviously you know in no doubt, but um, just for his leadership and his um, he's just will to win and his commitment. He's made a real difference these last few games, and just having him there. We all know he's, he's a pest, isn't he? He's a nuisance for defenders. You know, you're always the kind. Most shoulder. of the rest of us would call him something else, Aaron. But I know where <laughs> you're at. We're all looking forward to stupid bird celebrations and stuff like that. Back in the Premier League next year, so, yeah. Yeah, I've just realised I'm I've gone very dark on the video. Nah, you you, you're right. I, I mean, you can do it if you want, mate. I was just thinking I will better get this finished before Aaron ends up in pitch black. If you want to put, the, if you want to yeah, put the light on, on, do I'll so. Stick it on. Yeah, one do second. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I'll just waffle to the camera while Aaron turns on the the camera. Um, yeah, Vardy's out of contract, um, but it, it looks highly likely that he's obviously going to be signing on again for at least another year. I, I think, though, Aaron, most of us would have gone into the summer thinking, well, at least one of Ian Acho or Dakar will tear that league apart. Mm. Why has it not happened? A bit of a weird one. I mean, I, when I spoke to you last, we spoke about, you know, I'm a big fan of Ian Acho. Um, and, you know, he was getting quite a lot of minutes at that point. Uh, him and Vardy were sort of sharing the minutes a bit off the bench here and there. And he was looking good. Um, and then, obviously, he got a bit of a, a few injuries and then went away, obviously, with the African Cup of Nations and then never really got back in the side. Um, so I was quite surprised. And, I mean, he'll be one I think will be going in the summer. I'd be very surprised if he's still started there. 10 times for you I know, this shocking. season. Yeah, they were they were probably the first... 15 games really you know he's 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 really tailed off and and Maresca seemed to have not wanted to use him in in the running and stuff which is I don't know I don't know what's going on there whether he's just sort of he's, not, he's certainly not down tools or anything but whether Maresca's just thought well you won't be here in the summer anyway I mean the, there were a few players that um, last summer came to the manager and kind of said look you know we want to leave or whatever and whether there weren't offers for for them, and then they'd turn around and, and said to Mariski, "Yeah, look, I'm willing to stay and fight for my place, all that sort of stuff." And maybe Inacho was one of those. It, you know, it was whispers that maybe he was one of a few. Um, but yeah, I mean, Daka Daka has been <laughs> abysmal, really, at times. Um, I felt sorry from that night at Plymouth. 
just yeah, smashing I did, at stuff. I did feel sorry for him, but it, I mean, he's it, that wasn't an isolated incident. He'd, he'd been struggling for a bit of form. I mean, he had a patches of the season where he kind of came in and did and played his part, but um, he's just been so low on confidence, and you know the fans were just begging Moresca to take him out of the team, and he, he kept picking him, and it, it was. It's a bit of a strange decision by by him in the end, and obviously he, he's brought Vardy in, and and, and we we have picked up. But um, yeah, he's he's looked a bit of a, a forlorn figure really the uh, last few weeks, Stacker, and um, he's another one. I don't, who knows whether he'll still be there uh, come the summertime? I mean, there's not going to be, you know, they're not going to be que- queuing around the block for him particularly. I don't think, but no, um, probably not within this country. But I imagine there'd be plenty yeah. of interest from from elsewhere. I mean, that night he got four in, was it in Moscow, in, in Europa? That God, that feels a, like a lifetime ago. Yeah, now. but that would have yeah. marked a lot of cards of, of a re- very re- talented player there, actually. Um, how's my mate Harry Winks doing? He's been great. He's been really, really consistent. Um, I mean, he's up he's up there for one of our players of the season as well, really. I mean, Jewsby Hall's got, got players player and um, player of the year. And rightly so. He's been magnificent, but... Um, he wouldn't have been able to do half the stuff he, he was doing this season without Winks, you know, playing his part in the midfield. He's been he's been great, and you know, um, glad to see that. It seems like from what you were saying, he's got over his injury issues and things. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm well pleased to see that he started all but one game for you in the championship this year. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I think really that was probably a game he was suspended for actually. So I'd, he's. I don't think he so would have been available for every game that he's. It's not an injury much. that's kept him out. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. You know, Love Harry, obviously, come through the Tottenham Academy. Very talented boy. I yeah. think um, he might get overwhelmed in some games next year because I think he can struggle now back to goal, whereas you probably won't have too many putting pressure on in the, the same way. But if the structure's right for him and he's knitting the team together fine, as it looked like to me last week, yeah. It'll, it'll be... It, to be honest, you, he shouldn't have been dropping to that level, really. No, it was a surprise. Premier League player. Yeah, yeah. I think when we signed him, it was like a... You know, yeah, absolutely. Like raids kind of sign, and it was like, wow, that's quite a coup, really, for us in that division to get him. So, yeah, r- really pleased to hear that he's done well. Talk to me about these two wide players, then Fatu and uh, Steffi Mavadidi. Um, has been getting some pretty good reviews as well. For those who haven't seen them, what are they? Uh, well, should we start with Fatu? I mean, he's he's been a breath of fresh air for us this season. I mean, he's he's nineteen year old kid. He's come in, he's just been absolutely brilliant in most games. I mean, he, he can be a bit erratic at times, but he, he's he's very young and he's a bit raw, but he's got a shot on him. Um, he's extremely tricky. He's going to frighten the life out of some of these Premier League defenders next year, honestly. he's, he's, he's There's got... a little bit of Maris in there, isn't there? They, you can't help the comparison seeing that player play in that position for you and not think it, mate. Yeah, I mean, he's got a long way to go to to no, I hear that. get get to Mahrez's as level. I mean, he's probably arguably our best ever player. Well, in my era, anyway, our best ever player we've had down here, really. Um, but, Jamie Vardy you know, won't be bringing you Red Bull and Port anytime soon I mean, <laughs> after that comment, mate. Well, purely ability. Really. I hear you. I mean, obviously, Vardy's you know our most iconic player, and he's 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 a legend, isn't he? But yeah, in terms of actual ability on the ball and just. Mares was just, you know, unbelievable, unbelievable. It was, it was sad that we we had to sort of see him go at some stage, but you know, he he went on to obviously prove how good he was and and um, fantastic player. But um, yeah, Fatu has got got a lot to his game. He's, he's you know he's very young. He's he's got a lot to learn, but he's 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 been yeah. It'll be exciting. You know, it'll be one that will be worth watching next season. So, um, I mean, Mavadidi is another one who's done. He's done very well. Um, start of the season came in and he looked electric. Um, looked like he could, you know, absolutely skin some of these defenders. Um, but he has had sort of points in the season where he's had he's had you know loss of form and stuff. But again, I mean, we we're going into the the Premier League next year with those two as our wingers. Then we're, we're not in any trouble. They're, they're they're very good. There's a lot of ability there. So you know, um, that they'll be our starting uh, wide men for sure. You're and you're happy with that? That'd be good enough to go yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. Yep. Mavadidi 12 goals six assists this season Fatu six goals 13 assists I think very recently turned 20 Aaron but then obviously still plenty of scope for improvement now 
Um, yeah. Do you know which which players had the most shots in your squad this season during the season? Um, probably Fatima. It's not. No. It's Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Oh, he was the next one I was going to go for. Who yeah. Feels yeah. like a good place to almost finish this in terms of personnel for next year. You said he's been players player of the year, and I know the the, the guys who play gaffer of including myself, have pretty much had him in as a lock near enough all season. He plays his far more advanced role now than what people might have seen of him previously in the Premier League, where even out of possession, he's closest to Vardy or whoever's playing up front. And he breaks in, he, he actually crashes into the box. He always struck as this is really cultured football player, but wanted to be on the, the edge and involved. He actually breaks into the box now and gets a lot of goals because of it. 12 goals, 14 assists this season, Aaron. I think he'll be the most anticipated one in terms of FPL price next year. Mm. He might crash the game if he's 5.5, mightn't he? <laughs> yeah, possibly. And possibly. he could be because of the historical, what he's done in the league previously as well, rather than just judging him in the championship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for him to replicate what he's done in Oof. the championship in the Premier League, you know. Um, but, I mean, he's a great player. He's He's been... Head and shoulders, um, you know, the best midfielder in the league for me personally this year. You know, he's got he's got so many facets to his game. Um, he's just so busy. He's just, you know, even when he's having, you know, not the best of games, he's always, always committed, always trying to make things happen, always just just wanting the ball. He's just um he's just been absolutely brilliant. He's he's been a big part of why we've been so good this season and He's, he's drove us on in games when we've really struggled, and um, you know he's really stepped up. Um, he's been he's been absolutely immense for us. So you know, massive credit to him for you know sticking around for one. Um, there obviously were rumours in the in the um, January transfer window that Brian was sniffing around yeah. and stuff, and you know that good that was fair credit to him because he was playing some absolutely brilliant stuff. Is that his choice to stay? Do we know that? I believe so. I believe so. That's what he's come out and said in in the media and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think he's he he sort of said his mission was to get us back to the Premier League. You know, he's a Leicester lad. He's been at the club since he was eight years old. Um, he loves the club, so hopefully we can we can keep him. He's 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 the one that we we've obviously got a bit of value in there, haven't we? Um, so I'm just hoping that we don't have to sell him in the summer because I'd be pretty disappointed, really. But I, I, by all accounts, from what I've heard and listened to. He wants to stay, so let's hope that 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 is the case and that that can remain the case. But you know, finances might might have to. Yeah, that's the only problem. If yeah. the club needs money quickly for the books, homegrown, hundred percent, it will be it will be big money. If a, a Brighton or someone similar comes back in, that would be the only concern yeah. from that perspective. But I, I would like to see him certainly stay with you for at least next year. I think the thing that struck me last week was he doesn't look like a boy anymore. Looks like a man. Even the way he whinged to a referee, he's doing it like a man now. Um, and he's filled out a bit. He looks quicker, stronger. Yeah, yeah, good player. He's had 87 shots this season in the championship, Aaron. It's mad. Yeah, I know. I know. He's looking at, at sort of expected goal involvement per game of about 0.6. Now, it's unlikely he probably sustains those numbers jumping up to the Premier League, but yeah, don't be fooled into all oh, this is a standard sort of six to eight. He's playing further forward than that and should be of interest to people, I think, next season. No doubt, Aaron, we will cover that again on Correspondent Week during the summer if my missus lets me do it. Yeah, she will. <laughs> Aaron, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And congratulations again to yourself and all our Leicester City followers and listeners. Uh, anything you want to plug before we finish, Aaron? No, not particularly. Just Patreon. Get on Patreon. Yes, where for advanced and intermediate plus tier patrons, we'll be having a closer look at Leicester tactically from that game with Southampton last week. Thank you very much, sir. Enjoy your summer. Speak to you in July or August, no doubt. Uh, thank you, Aaron. And to all our listeners, have a great weekend. Be nice to each other. Cue music, please. Man, show. 